Hello friends, Namaskar. Saving income tax liability is certainly a good practice and it cannot be condemned. And when I talk about saving the income tax liability, it must get your curiosity that, okay, if today Anu Bhatia is talking about tax saving, let's hear to it. My dear friends, in today's video, I am trying to discuss with you tax saving technique which will be helpful to you rather the current financial year is going to end by 31st of March and with this aim only that if for the current financial year you can save some tax liability by adopting this so-called technique that is tax harvesting then it may be fruitful for me to be there before you through this video. So let's discuss that what is the concept of tax harvesting. Now to understand this term that what is tax harvesting and what are its types I may first see that okay whether in the Income Tax Act 1961 there is some definition given to the term tax harvesting. The answer is no. The term tax harvesting is adopted by practice not by law. But it does not mean that the tax harvesting is an illegal technique. It is purely legal because it is possible due to the existing provisions of the income tax law which allow an assessee to save certain tax liability. So I would not say that tax harvesting is invalid or illegal. It is full within the four corners of the income tax law. And let's also understand what are its time. So let me give a normal understanding of it. That tax harvesting is a practice adopted by the taxpayer to reduce his ultimate tax liability on the capital gain income arising from sale of shares or securities for a year. Primarily through this video, whatever tax harvesting practice I'm going to discuss is pertaining to the capital gain related income. And therefore, my dear friends, if I talk about the types of the tax harvesting, this could be of two types, that is tax loss harvesting and tax gain harvesting. So now I will take you along with me to understand what is tax loss harvesting and what is tax gain harvesting. Let's understand them one by one. Now let me begin with the term tax loss harvesting. What is tax loss harvesting? To exemplify it, suppose if I say there is a person like me whose name is Anubhatiya and this person, Mr. Anubhatiya, is having certain long-term capital gain for the current financial year 22-23 save for an amount of rupees 10 lakh. Now you all know that if this long term capital gain is from sale of listed securities that is listed share, then my capital gain above rupees 1 lakh will be taxable at the rate 10%. So this year on 9 lakh rupees long term capital gain, I have to pay at the rate 10% that is 90,000. Suppose when I go through my portfolio, that is where I can see various investments which I did in the past, I could find that there are certain scripts where I can see that which are giving me some long term capital loss even. So what I did that I don't want to sell those securities because I am of the belief that yes, someday those securities will also run and they will give me the huge benefit. But if I could sell these securities today, say as on the date of today, and then I buy them again tomorrow, then what will happen then technically because I am selling those securities today, I am booking a loss of rupees 2 lakh and which will be available for set off against this long term capital gain of the current year. So I will be left with the amount of long term capital gain of 8 lakh. So on one side when I was paying on 9 lakh rupees that is 10 lakh minus 1 lakh up to 1 lakh long term capital gain no tax liability. So 90,000 and in this case I will be paying again at the rate 10% on 7 lakh at the rate 70,000. So what I got, I got a tax benefit of rupees 20,000. So this is exactly tax loss harvesting that against certain long term capital gain which are in your hands, you want to adjust those capital gain against some similar nature of losses and this kind of set off and after this set off, I am not ultimately sold the security. Within same financial year, I purchased the securities back almost at the same price. So what will happen? The securities are ultimately held with me and I have also booked the losses whatever was there till date so that my ultimate tax liability is lower. So this is a case which is called tax loss harvesting. Now let me come and discuss the provisions of tax gain harvesting. 
Again, I would repeat, my dear friend, that there is no provision in the income tax law which specifically deals with the tax gain harvesting. But because of the current tax rates or tax structure, this kind of practice may be adopted by this. Mr. Sees, under tax gain harvesting, what happens? Say, you all know that under section 112A of the Income Tax Act 1961, any long term capital gain up to rupees 1 lakh will be taxed at nil rate. So what happens if a small investor, say for an example, a person is having a portfolio of rupees 10 lakh under which certain securities of rupees 10 lakh, which he acquired, has today a value of rupees 11 lakh. So what he can do, suppose he sells these securities, all the securities which are long-term security, any books of 1 lakh rupees long-term capital gain, his tax liability for this year would be nil. Now, since he doesn't intend to sell the securities and he wants to retain them for long. So what he may do, he may again reacquire them at a price of rupees 11 lakh around. Next year, suppose these securities price to rupees 14 lakh. So next year, after holding them for a one year period, the SSE sells the securities again. Then what will happen? 14 minus 11, there will be further 3 lakh rupees capital gain. But again, thumb rule is same up to 1 lakh rupees long term capital gain tax liability will be nil. And on the balance 2 lakh rupees, the tax liability shall be at the rate 10%. So what happens if these securities which were acquired initially for 10 lakh, which were ultimately sold for 14 lakh, and this transaction would have been done in second year only, then there could be 4 lakh rupees gain out of which 1 lakh was not taxable, that is taxable at nil rate, and remaining 3 lakh could have been taxed at the rate 30%, 30,000. As compared to that, what we did on this 1 lakh for year 1, we didn't pay any tax liability. On this second year 3 lakh, we paid tax liability on 2 lakh only. So we ultimately paid 20,000 rupees only. And this is how this kind of practice may be adopted by the SSE year on year. And therefore, technically, my dear friends, if you look into the term harvesting, means there is a crop, the benefit of which you are deriving today. So, here what is happening that whenever there is a loss or a profit arising in between, which you don't want to ultimately book, but you book such loss or profit just for the sake of ensuring your tax liability to be minimized, then what is wrong? This kind of practice may be adopted. So tax gain harvesting has this kind of interpretation, which I try to put up before you. Now, my dear friends, I would like to discuss three important points which you as an investor should take care about whenever you are there in the practice of tax harvesting. First point is break in the period of holding. Whenever a person indulges into tax harvesting, what he or she does, he basically breaks his period of holding. Because suppose you acquired an asset on 1st of January 2022, which you sold off say by 31st of March 2023. And thereafter, you again reacquired on 1st of April 2023. And then you sold the asset on 30th of June 2023. So what happens if you would have counted the period of holding from 1st of Feb to 30th of June 2023, if the sale were single sale, then the capital gain would have been long term. But if you book first capital gain here and second capital gain here, then the first capital gain, my dear friends, was long term and second was short term. So before you indulge into this tax harvesting practice, you should be careful that, okay, my capital gain holding period would get broken. One more advice which I would like to give you here is, whenever you are indulged in the practice of tax harvesting, you are selling a security, you don't want to ultimately sell it, then you will buy it again. Please don't buy on the same day. There has to be at least a gap of one day so that the transaction is delivery based. It is not speculative. So that gap should be maintained. Further, my dear friends, with the present provisions of income tax law in tax harvesting, the cap on the long term capital gain, wherever there is a tax gain harvesting, up to 1 lakh rupees long term capital gain tax rate is nil. So, if somebody is booking long term capital gain higher than 1 lakh, then on the capital gain above 1 lakh, there is no benefit of tax harvesting as such. That is also a very important point which you should take care of. And third point, my dear friends, is the rule of long term, short term loss, which has to be taken care of. The rule that is the thumb rule is that my dear friends, long term capital losses cannot be adjusted against short term capital gain. 
However, vice versa, that is short term capital loss can be adjusted against the long term capital gain. So that is a very important point which you should take care about while you are moving into the tax harvesting. So it may not be that we ultimately end up into a wrong practice. Say for an example, if you have a short term capital gain this year of 10 lakh and with this kind of video, you have booked some long term capital loss of 2 lakhs to do tax harvesting. Now this long term capital loss of 2 lakh, 2 lakh cannot be adjusted against the short term capital gain of 10 lakh. So the tax harvesting would not ultimately take place in your case. So that is also an important point which you have to take care of. At the end my dear friends, I hope that the tax harvesting term is now more clear to you. And you have to then see that okay whether in your case under the practical facts and circumstances tax harvesting is really required or not required and you have to be vigilant whenever you are in the practice of tax harvesting that okay while you are selling the securities at the same time you are either reacquiring them near about the price at which you sold them so that you ultimately don't uh, lose with your securities holding also and sometime it may happen that you may have been selling certain security and buying another security that is also possible. So tax, tax, uh, tax harvesting practice which I discussed through this video uh, has to be applied based on the understanding of your specific case and I would suggest that you may consult with your CA your tax advisor also before you actually move into this kind of practice. So I hope the content of this video would be certainly useful to you and may be helpful in saving your tax liability also. Thank you my dear friends for being with me. Wishing you all the best. Jai.